G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, today I'm going to do a bit more drilling with the little 775 motor driven power spindle that I reviewed a while back. Got a lot of interest. I mean, I set this thing up and really it's one of the most useful things I've actually got in the workshop. I use it a lot. It's really, really handy and it's actually surprisingly quite powerful for the size of the thing. It fits on this size lathe, which is a 10 inch swing, really well. And yeah, uh, it's driven with a, a GoFit a 60 volt variable voltage 5 amp power supply, which is great because you can vary your speed and uh, being 5 amps, the motor can grunt it out quite nicely. So I'll show you what I'm going to do today with it. Right, well this is today's job. It's the drive dog plate from the Shorblin uh, 102 lathe that I've got. And when I got that old lathe, they had a BSA chuck mounted onto this drive plate. And the chuck was absolutely rooted. I mean, it was totally and utterly worn out. It was a rubbish bin job and that's where it went. And I never, I've never used this uh, this drive plate. I normally don't use drive dogs anyway. I did actually investigate putting another chuck on it and uh, decided to give that idea away and I've been using collets on the Shorblin instead. But, I mean, the, way, the, the fact that they drove a normal scroll chuck on this with this imbalance in it, which is what you're going to get, uh, I thought was pretty bodgy. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put some, drill some holes and put some threads in for some counterbalance weights I can put on this. I can actually use this as a backing plate for a chuck. I mean, it's just sitting there doing nothing. So that's today's job. Rayleigh drill some some holes. I have to go up to what's uh, the five sixteenths bolts. So I'll have to put in a decent sized drill and I'll step my way up. I can't read it because it's all worn off. I, I just I just I checked it on this one and uh, it'll do the job. But yeah, it's a good sized drill and uh, I'll just step my way up to it. This is cast iron, so we shouldn't have any trouble. So I'll start off with a small uh, 3mm drill and then I'll just step my way up slowly and once I've got the two holes drilled right through, well then I'll just tap the thread. We're good to go. So the idea is I'll just use some I'll hit a bolts. They'll come through from the front. The chuck will be smaller than this because it's only 80 mil chuck, and this is 100 mil. And I'll go through, and then I can put counterbalance weights on the back. Just machine them up and screw them on. A couple of big nuts, something like that, and it will be pretty easy to offset that that imbalance. So that's the go. Let's get on with it. So we'll start off with a three mil drill. I'll run it at 16 volts and uh, hand feed it. Now this is cast iron, so it's pretty soft. Does this easily. Look at that. Now we'll do the other one. And this is where it's good being able to cross drill. You can just rotate your job, get the exact radius you want. The same radius. Fantastic. The job won't move when you do it like this. This is crossing the rotational direction.
These are some little three mil cobalt drills I bought from Bangwood. They're very good. Very good. You get a pack of ten for next to nothing. And it's a perfect size. Well actually it's two point five. The 2.5 so that I can tap 3 mil bolts, so that's a 2.5 mil drill. But they're very well made, man. Super sharp. And I bought them with my own hard-earned cash. Okay, now we'll swap for 3 sixteenths. The target thread will be 5 sixteenths. Now this is quite a big step up. And we're still on 16 volts. Right. Let's give it a go. Once again, we've held our position, you see, so they go straight in. Pretty impressive, eh? I mean, that's pretty impressive. Of course, you always drew and machine cast iron dry. So, uh, yeah. But uh, I've got to say, this thing is very, very, very good. It's one of the better things that I've actually uh, made up. I'll do the other one now. piece of cake. Okay, so now we go to the final size. We'll go to the, the nominal drill size for that thread. Mm, bit of a step, isn't it? Well, maybe I'll, I'll, I think I'll get one in between. That's a little bit too much in one hit with that little drill. Okay, we'll go 15 64ths first. You see my imperial drills have had a hard time. Had a lot of work. Alright, give this a go. Same setting. Once again, it's a bit easy. Just step your way up. Don't make too big a steps. The other step to a normal size would have been too much. So we'll just do an intermediate. And uh, you can see the job doesn't move and you can easily center it. So I'll do this one. So now we go to 17 64ths. <laughs> it's funny working in uh, Imperial. I'm always a metric man, but I just happen to have some old Imperial Allen Herb bolts I want to use up. And uh, so we're going to go the American way. Imperial. Used to be the Australian way until 1972, I think it was. Okay, let's do this. The final drill. Same setting, 16 volts.
Alright, let's go. Job done. Easy as that. So there you go guys, a bit of eye candy for you. Just shows you how good this little gadget is. Staying cold, no problem whatsoever. It made that job really easy. I was going to do it in the drill press but I couldn't get it to sit square. Plus you don't have the control, you can't set your radius perfectly uh, and have it duplicated as you can with this setup. So yeah, this is the ideal setup. Peanuts really, this thing. And uh, the dearest thing is going to be your, your power supply really. And certainly this GoFit power supply is the bee's knees in my opinion. It's, it's fantastic. Okay, that's it from me. I'll get on with the job, do some thread tapping. See you next time. Cheers.